Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna test out the feature on Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom that claims to sharp a little bit the images for printing. It's a placebo effect or actually does add some sharpness to your prints. I am here <laughs> in Courchevel in Olivier Photo shop and uh, where I've been working during this winter as a photographer and as a dev developer. The image that we're gonna test out, the sharpening feature, is this image over here. So there is a lot of sharp areas to explore and there is a lot of details and a lot of uh, hard edges to test this feature out. That's why I choose this image over here. And as well, I want some prints for myself of this beautiful image. So let me just show you how it works here in Lightroom. It's in File, Export, with your image selected, of course. Let's go down here. And here it is, Sharpen 4, not for screen, for glossy paper. And we're gonna do it in Standard and High, okay? If you are curious, the new Lightroom also has this option. If you go to File, Export, and in more options, you can see that you have output sharpening, glossy paper, you have standard and high. But my workflow is basically bridge and camera raw, so let's use that. So I'm gonna open this in camera raw. It's easy, it's just control R to open this image in camera raw. Here we go. And to save the image, you just click save the image. Here it is, sharpen glossy and standard and high okay easy enough save and here is the your feedback saying that it's saving the image so let me just show you a trick in Photoshop to do the sharpening as well so let's open this image it will open in Photoshop now here in Photoshop I don't want to just add a filter of sharpening I'm gonna do it a little bit more advanced so let me just show you. So I'm going to select the background. So duplicate the layer. Okay. And now I'm going to go to filter. Instead of just sharpen, you can do that and make some print shots to see if it's doing something good. But what I'm going to do actually is go here, use the high pass filter, zoom in the image. So I'm going to do control zero. So I am zoomed in on the image and I'm seeing the 2.5 pixels way too much. Something like one pixel and a half. For this image, it's good enough. I can see the whiten and the darkening corners of the image. Okay, that is good. Now this image needs to be pure black and white. So let's go to image adjustments and use saturation and the saturation goes all the way to zero okay and now this image is completely out of color so i can use now the soft light and as you can see if i go i don't know if you can see this but there is some sharpening happening without way too much uh, artificial look a little bit better and you can see that there is some kind of sharpening happening here. Yeah, let's export this image and let's go printing. And the bad boy that you're gonna use to develop the images is this machine, a KISS DKS-17. As you probably noticed, I didn't use print, I said develop, because this bad boy, it's old school development photos. So let me just explain a little bit how this machine works so you have an idea what I uh, what is going on over here. We pick up old school photo sensible paper and as you can see up if I open the tape here the reel of paper tape is the photo sensible uh, paper it's uh, loaded as a reel mm. in here and yeah we're gonna load it into the machine like so up and it is in inside of this enclosure so it won't get in touch with the light so it's ready to be developed 
Then we gonna go to the dark room. Yeah, actually this machine has a built-in dark room. A camera obscura. A really cool thing that you... So the paper comes out of here and it explodes here. Of course, everything is dark. And there is this, the projector over here that will project the image directly to the paper and then the paper gonna pass to the bat. Okay, now the bats is the three bats over here. If I open this... And here we have the, the racks. So we have the racks, so it has the development. Revelateur, fixateur and stabilizateur. Re re uh, developer. Bleach fix and stabilizer. So the paper will come between these racks rolling, getting developed and then getting fixed. Process. And then Process. <laughs> processed. <laughs> then it Rinse. feeds. And rinses here. Yeah, and at the end it's gonna feed up to this part over here that will dry it up and and we'll, we'll get out on the other side. So I imagine you guys are wondering why we are still using old school development. The first reason is workflow. So cameras today photograph in RGB, of course. And this machine, as it's projecting the image with light, not with ink, it's using RGB, not SMIC. So there is no problems of uh, color conversion or calibration screens that doesn't show what you are printing so the workflow is really smooth starting on the camera all the way to printing also it's a quite fast process because you are not injecting ink on a paper you are actually just exposing the, the image directly on the paper and it has a lot of resolution so you have 350 uh, pixels per inch so that's a quite sharp image in a small area so another thing is the paper itself it's quite resilient so it will last longer without the colors fading out over time and also as well if you have some dust or something on the paper you can wash it because it's not ink on the paper it's actually a good reaction that is embedded on the paper it's not ink so you can wash it okay Gently. Gently. Another thing is that the same process can develop a range of different papers like uh, glossy that we're gonna use today, it's Fujifilm glossy, and matte, deep matte and pearl. Talking about pearl, that paper become my favorite paper to print the Milky Way images because there is a lot of dark and the pearl gets a little bit of brightness on the stars that it's just just amazing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but look as the stars is glowing on this paper. It's beautiful. And the degree D here on the greens on the on the mountain is quite amazing. And here are the results. We don't care about the color. We only care now about the sharpness. So... I have no idea which image is which. But uh, they look uh, quite similar. Do you want to check it out? This one and this one it's the... Is the better. Is the more sharp ones and it feels... Especially with a bit of distance because Let's be honest, the pictures, we don't look at the pictures like this. Mm. We look at the pictures like with a bit of distance. And this one and this one looks a little bit sharper. This is hell though. But by looking by a distance, I think this one looks better. And, and, and this one. They all look good. <laughs> you see that this one, it's a little bit smooth, this two. But this one... This one, it looks a little bit over sharpened, like it's not natural, this one. And this one, I have the feeling that it's, mm. that it's good. This is a little bit over sharp, do you see that? Digital, digital enhancement. <laughs> it doesn't look natural. So, let's turn them around and see what, which one it's which. So, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this one is the, the Photoshop one. This one has no enhancement, 
this is the standard and high Ali okay let's see so high Ta -da -da. standard this one is the standard one LV so the high one mm -hmm. that it doesn't look natural so I said it was this one, yes? Yeah. So, the standard one. So, that's a good thing. So, this one. I said it was nothing, yes? It's zero. Photoshop. Ah, oh, it's enhanced in Photoshop. Not good enough. That leaves this one with the zero on it. That means that this one has no sharpening. So, honestly, the standard is the best one. And there you go, everyone. So, uh, it's not a placebo effect. It's actually doing something. And uh, I am uh, actually quite impressed that it works way better than the, um, the Photoshop sharpening that I made on Photoshop. So, if you have any questions, leave it down below in the comments. If you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, until next time, see ya! Ça tombe bien parce que c'était ça qu'on a imprévu pendant la décision en fait.